Kia ora Year 12 and 13. This is the second part of the Conics exemplar about the swimming pool cover. So it's going to make much more sense if you've done part one, where we had a parabolic model. And this should not say parabolic model. This should say part two, elliptical model. Okay, so lots of you like working with a little. Uh, so this one should feel a little bit easier. Okay, so we've got the same specifications as in the first one. We are designing a swimming pool cover and it needs to fit these conditions here. So the cover has got to be at least 5 metres above any point on the water in the pool. And the pool, remember, goes between negative 5 and 5 metres. Okay, and then we have a path next to the pool and then we have changing rooms that are 3 metres wide. Okay, the cover of the pool can't be more than 8 metres high and the maximum width is 22 metres. So here's what we get told about design B. Remember we've got to check that our um, model, as it's shown here in the picture, fits those four criteria and if it doesn't we have to change it. So design B has got the same width as design A. So at this point you're thinking what the heck was the width for design A? Well, we need to go back to our working in question one for that, so we'll come back to that. Its cross-section is a semi-ellipse on a 250mm high wall. So here's the centre of my ellipse, and this is the major axis. And this design just meets the 5 metre height requirement for any point on the water in the pool. So that's telling me that at this point here, the height of the ellipse will be 5. All right, so we're going to use that. Okay, so let's get going. It's got the same width as the design in part A, and that means the design we were given. All right, so in part A we had, this was my ellipse, and we got our equation. That was y equals 6, I think it was 6 minus x squared over 20. So we found these two points here, and the width was um, 2 times the square root of 120. Right, so that's quite useful here because I can mark in the endpoints of my ellipse. Okay, using what I had in the last model. So we can now start to write the form of my equation. It's going to be in this form, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Only, it's not going to be exactly that, because we've shifted up the ellipse by 0.25 of a metre. So that's going to affect this term here. So I'm going to start doing this on the next slide. Alright, so let's see what we've got. Well, we've got x squared on a squared, plus shifting up by 0.25 means it'll be y minus 0.25, squared on b squared equals 1. Now we don't know b squared yet. All right, remember b squared is this um, related to this here, so this is going to be point b here. That's for a one that hasn't been translated. But we do know a squared because we've got a at positive and negative root 120. So that means my equation is going to be x squared over 120 plus y minus 1 quarter, switching to fractions. This must be true. And remember we were told that this design just meets the 5 metre height requirement for any point on the water in the pool. So the pool goes here, so that means that at x equals 5, the height is 5. So we're now going to substitute this information and solve for b. So 5, 5 is on the equation. We get x squared on 120 plus y minus a quarter on b squared equals 1. So that gives me 25 on 120 plus now, 5 minus a quarter, I'm going to write this as a fraction, is 19 quarters. Okay, so that's 20 minus 1, and that's got to be squared, divided by b squared 
equals 1. Right, so simplifying this a little bit, what do we get? Well, we get 19 squared over 16 b squared is equal to 95 over 120. Alright, I know most of you at this point are going to groan and reach for your calculators, but I am going to keep this in fractions because we get a really nice answer and it's, it is worthwhile doing these and getting exact answers. Okay, so we're going to get b squared is equal to, just rearranging that a little bit, 120 times 19 squared divided by 16 times 95. Okay, so 95 is 519, so, and here we're going to get 30. Well, let's just first knock out a few common factors. So 30 over 4 times 19 here, and we just leave with 5 down here. So that's going to give me um, 319s over 2, that's right, equals 57 over 2. So that's my b squared. Now that's not very nice, but never mind, that's what our equation is. So now we're good to go. We'll do the equation on the next slide. So we've got x squared over 120 plus y minus a quarter squared, that's my shift upwards in there, over 57 over 2 equals 1. Now we can't leave it like that, that just looks horrible. So x squared over 120 plus 2 times that over 57 equals 1. Okay, so the first thing we want to check is uh, the conditions. So let's have a look. Condition 1, the cover. Well the cover needs to be at least 5 metres above. Now that one is good because we designed it. We, that was how we found our equation. Okay, the second condition we'll come back to. The second condition is about the changing rooms and the third condition is about the cover but the fourth one is the maximum width. And again we know that's okay because we've got it at plus or minus root 120 and it could be and that works out to be 10.95. We know that from the first question. So what we've really got to do here is check the changing room condition and the cover condition. All right, so remember, we've got our ellipse here, and it goes out to 10.9, so the edge of the changing rooms is at 10 metres here. So if we go up here, we want to figure out what that point is there. So when x equals 10, what's y? So we get 10 squared over 120 plus 2 into y minus 1 quarter squared on 57 equals 1. Right, so solving that, this works out to be 5 sixths. So we get 2 into y minus 1 quarter squared over 57 equals 5 sixths. So working through that we get y equals, I'm going to skip a couple of lines here because not having my stylus is driving me slightly around the bend today. So we get y is equal to 1 quarter plus or minus the square root of 57 divided by 12. Now we're going to ignore the negative solution because we're dealing with a height up here. And that gives us y is equal to 2.43 metres. And that's less than 2.5 metres. So that is a problem. People are going to bang their heads on the top of the changing room um, ceiling. So we're going to have to move our, our um, graph up. But you probably guessed that anyway. Now we're going to check the cover. We need to check if it is 8 metres or less. Okay, so to do that, let's think about where the maximum point of the cover is. We've got to check that's not too big. Well, it's going to be at x equals 0. So this is easy. We've got x squared over 120 plus 2 y minus 0.25 squared over 57 equals 1. And we're going to substitute in x equals 0. That gives me, again, I am skipping steps here just a little bit. 
sorry, I hope that doesn't make it too painful. That works out to be this, and now we have to take the square root and rearrange. So that ends up giving me y is equal to 5.589 metres. Um, if you need help with this, all we're doing really here is just solving an equation. You just ask me in class. Okay, so y is equal to 5.589 metres. So that's well under 8 metres. So that's fine. So the only problem we've got is the changing rooms, and they are off by just a little bit. So let's look at how we can change this equation around. It's actually really, really easy to fix it up. Okay, well, we had our... Um, what am I trying to say? Our model was at 10.95 here. So that was root 120. And this was root 120 here. But our vertex was way down at 5 point something something. It could be as high as 8. So how could we just do an ellipse that had a height of 8? Well, we could look at just taking out the wall and going from here like this, just doing a semi-ellipse like this, and then we can check whether it still all works. So let's try that. If that's 8, we're going to have x squared over 120 plus y squared over 64 equals 1. Now, if you wanted to push that a little further, you could actually have gone out to 121 here. doesn't matter, but why change two things at once? Let's just try and change that top vertex and see if it works. Alright, so we need to check at x equals 5, is my height still going to be okay? All right, so we get 5 squared over 120 plus y squared over 64 is 1. That gives us y squared equals, um, so it works out to be 64 times 95 over 120. Now when I solve that, I get the height here is 7.118 meters, so that's fine. When I check x equals 10 in this equation, well actually that should be way up there, and I look at the height there, so I substitute in 10, and I will get a value out of y squared, is equal to 64 on 6, so y is equal to 3.27 metres. Okay, and again, that's fine for the edge of my changing room, so there are my changing rooms there. Okay, and the lowest point on the roof is higher than the 2.5 that we need. Okay, so um, that's all you had to do for that one there. I don't know what you think, but I feel like the ellipse problems tend to be quite a bit easier, and the transformations are very easy to work with. Just remember to be careful where you choose to put in your axes and your centre. Okay, thanks very much for watching.